Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining our webinar. Our topic today focuses on CBCT, how, what, where, and when. My name is Adam, Content Marketing Specialist with Henry Schein, and I'll be your moderator. If you have questions during today's presentation, please add them to the Q&A section of your control panel, and we'll answer as many as we can at the conclusion of the webinar. This webinar is sponsored by Henry Schein Dental, and no CE credits are being offered for viewing this presentation. Our speaker today is Dr. Bill Bush. Dr. Bush has been in private practice since 1991, and during that time, he received awards for his contributions to the dental profession. So with that, thank you, Dr. Bush, for being with us today. I'll turn it over Thanks. to you. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for inviting me to speak about CBCT. Uh, I love technology, been practicing now for 31 years, uh, been adding technology to the practice since 1990. And um, the more recent acquisitions have been in CBCT. And I love, love it so much, we actually have two of them. And I'll get into that in a little bit sooner. Hopefully everyone's healthy with uh, all that's going on in our country. And I've got a good feeling with the summer coming, we're gonna head for a clear, clear skies. Um, just a little bit about me. I graduated uh, from St. John's University in New York in 85 and then graduated from Fairleigh Dickinson College of Dental Medicine in New Jersey in 89. And then I did a full GPR residency at a VA hospital in Topeka. That's what got me from New York to Midwest, which I love. So shout out to all my mid Midwest people and my New York people and all, all across the country. Um, I've got my fellowship award in 2003 and then 2010, my mastership. And then uh, one of the coveted things, is especially with uh, the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl, I accomplished one of my lifelong dreams, which was to be a team dentist for the Kansas City Chiefs, go Chiefs. And then recently just got my diplomat status with the American Sleep and uh, Sleep and breathing, I spelt that wrong, and breathing academy. Um, technology milestones, I've always been kind of a technology nut. Um, just a few things back in 91, got a laser, started using that, and added digital radiography, then intraoral cameras. And then if anyone's uh, as old as I am, I'm 57, uh, we had the Victor voice charting that uh, Henry Schein is kind of perfected with their Dentrix voice or period charting, but Victor was no more. Um, and then in 1998, we added the Dentrix practice management system with a couple other uh, practice management systems I had used before, but in my opinion, that's the best backbone for all the technology we've added over the years. Most reliable, everything at your fingertips. And then in 2001, we added the Sarah CAD cam and then 2003, Casey Education, so we can educate our patients with videos. 2005, the water lace. Started doing implants in 2009, followed by uh, some three-shape digital impressioning, ICAT, and which we'll be talking about today. In 2016, I added um, a dental associate, and we just recently added a second one. So we were using the Strona Orthophos SL for airway and integration with CERC and CAD CAM. And it's kind of nice to have to. I know I'm a little spoiled here, but um, if one goes down or one breaks, uh, we always have the other one up and running. Um, then we uh, added the Florida probe, uh, Son Endo Gentle Wave, which is a way to treat uh, root canal teeth uh, quickly and efficiently. And um, then just kind of, again, bitten by the bug of technology, we added another three-shape scanner just for the hygiene department that's wireless that we share with all the hygienists. And now with the compare feature, um, we can take a video of their teeth once a year, and it makes kind of a Facebook highlight video uh, for the time they're in the practice every year. So it will compare how their teeth have changed, the gum heights, the enamel, that may be wearing away due to clenching or bruxing. It's really been uh, incredible um, for the patient's perspective. They're asking for treatment now instead of me telling them what to do. So 
uh, I would visit that. And then um, hopefully next year, we do have a small printer that we use for a surgical stints. The, uh, but we're hoping that uh, we'll get more into 3D printing um, other things next year. So kind of the why, we all know this, but with CBCT, there's better diagnosis on the average of 30 to 35% more findings that you see with the CBCT or 3D. Um, and we're more productive, just like I said, we just added another dentist to our practice, Dr. Caitlin Hall. We've got Dr. Tucker Van Eperen, and uh, he was actually a patient when he was 12, uh, got out of dental school and called me for a job. I wasn't looking at that point, but he's come on. I've been very fortunate with that. Um, and then we just recently added Dr. Hall. Um, potential uses of the comb beam. We've got implant placement, impactions, endodontics, uh, inferior alveolar canal location, our sinuses. Uh, I've talked a lot about sinuses with our, my patients locating uh, mucus retention cysts and um, cloudiness and sinus infections. One thing I'm proud of is when a patient thinks that they have a sinus infection, I don't have to guess anymore. I can do a 3D scan and actually see the congestion in their sinuses and point that out to them. Um, odontogenic lesion location, and I've got a great case I'm going to show everyone on my hygienist uh, who ended up with a benign um, lesion um, that was uh, asymptomatic, but it's a little scary because you can see right through her jaw. On a 2D scan, nothing. On a 3D scan, shows right through it. Uh, trauma evaluation, especially if you see athletes in your practice, to rule out fractures. TMJ vis visualization, um, especially with patients that are having symptoms or if you're getting ready to do a big case, you can get a baseline reading of the condyles and where everything sits. So you can compare once you start changing occlusion, surgical guide construction, CAD-CAM integration. That's kind of why we stuck with uh, or added the orthophos um, so we can integrate with our CEREC and we can do surgical guides and many other things too. Um, other areas of dentistry, dental anesthesiology, your diagnosis, endodontics, fixed, implant surgery, implant prosthodontics, uh, maxillofacial prosthetics, occlusion operative, oral maxillofacial surgery, um, pathology, hopefully you don't see much of that, um, orthodontics, pediatrics. We actually have a t-shirt printer in our practice, so if we do have to take a cone beam with um, any of the devices when the radiation level is super low, we can print out the picture of their jawbone on their t-shirt and they get to walk out with that and that's been uh, kind of a fun thing to do for the, the teenagers and uh, once in a while kids. We also use it for periodontics, preventative dentistry, removal process, and treatment planning. So the how. I think the best thing to do is talk to your, if you're a Henry Schein customer, talk to the imaging specialist that sells the CBCT. Um, that's really the best place to start um, talking to you and my colleagues. I think you have your best leverage um, with your vendor that you buy your supplies with because they always want your supply business. So if they do um, sell the machine, you may get a machine for a cheaper price somewhere else. But if something goes wrong or you're not happy and you want to return it, you, you have much better leverage with your vendor if you buy it from them than just buying it from someplace. And I can tell you that from practical experience that's happened to me. Um, talk to your accountant, see if this is the right time or time in the future that would be affordable to your practice. Um, make sure you have the room. Um, I'll talk about several different uh, CBCT units that have different footprints that um, you'll need to know. They, they are actually very compact. Um, even one that fits on the wall from Acteon. And then also your computer requirements. CBCT has been around for about 20 years. Uh, the first one was from New Tom and it featured uh, a position where you'd lay down or in the supine position. Now you don't see many of those. Uh, ICAT from Cavo 
uh, has the sit down model, which we have the ICAP Flex, and then the Orthophos is a much better footprint, much like a panel that just mounts on the wall. So different things, you know, we all want to know about the return on the investment. I'm kind of a more of a fire ready aim kind of guy. Um, and I let the, the return follow itself. Um, but if you want to think about the return on the investments right off the bat, you'll end up with 25% more findings, 25 to 30%, 35% uh, in our practice. Uh, with implants, 18% of the GPs in the U.S. are placing implants, and 92% of them are just one to two units, and which fits great in with surgical guides because they're very easy to print with uh, one or two. Once you start getting into three and four, then you have to think about um, fixation pins, and it gets a little bit more complicated. 5% uh, of the extracted teeth become implants. Um, I've done some immediate implants here and there, but haven't been been successful, but um, the technology is getting better and the techniques are getting better. So if you don't do implants, I highly recommend it. Uh, the, with the CVCT, it's kind of like 1-800-CALL-BEFORE-YOU-DIG. Uh, so it gives you that GPS technology so you know what size, what brand, and where and how you want to place the implant in the patient's mouth. So you go to the mouth with confidence. Before CVCT, I... Uh, would just do it freehand, which now is a little bit scary. Um, medical legally, um, you're on much firmer ground. If you have a CBCT when you're placing implants, patients are more aware of that technology. And I, I've actually had a patient come in and ask me if I was gonna use a surgical guide and, and it was just for one tooth and they said they wouldn't do it unless I was going to use one and let them know that that's what we do here in our practice. Um, and then I just started getting into sleep medicine about two to three years ago, and it's a great tool to show them uh, their airway assessment and how they're breathing. And if you start, and you, 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 everyone out there knows this, and I feel guilty talking about it, but the patient that you're working on that has the large tongue can barely see the back of their throat, and you're trying to do a crown prep on tooth number 18, and you're just sweating bullets and it takes you twice the amount of time and you just chalk it up, you put the crown on and say goodbye to the patient. But now in our practice, now I see that I'll sit the patient up, take five minutes to talk to them about sleep apnea, uh, OSA, uh, obstructive sleep apnea, and tell them that we can get them in for another consultation to see if we can help their symptoms, which is typically daytime tiredness, snoring, those kinds of things. So those people are in your practice and I'd say about 30% of those folks are there. So instead of just sending them away, now not only have you rehabilitated their mouth, you're also going to um, help in their well-being and, um, and their spouse or their significant other will be happy that there is no more snoring. Um, case acceptance wise, like I said, um, I'm much more happier when my patients are asking me what's next, and that happens in our practice quite a lot, rather than me telling them what to do their next step because they get to see and participate in the treatment planning aspect with the cone beam uh, technology and with the other tools that we have, the digital impression taking. So the what, the practice growth, you're definitely um, are gonna have high practice growth. Um, we're in the Midwest. Um, we stayed open during the pandemic, uh, except for the hygiene department and the CBCT um, and the other technology perfectly positioned myself for um, being successful, helping patients stay out of the emergency room. So as, as compared to my numbers from last year, we're up about 6%, which is pretty good. And, and I have to give all the credit to the folks at Henry Schein and my technology specialist. And as you saw from my milestones, we've added a little bit. I think if you add a little bit, add a little bit year after year, um, you get better and better and your production and your numbers go up. So from being able to do a, a crown in the office in one visit where labs were closed, I know some labs were closed during um, the shutdown and also being able to give the patient um, an experience that can be done in a single visit. They love that. So 
Uh, definitely consider the technology that we're talking about. The CBCT is a great way to start if you, if you haven't dabbled in digital. Um, implants, we do in our practice, added those. We do a lot of endodontics. Um, TMD, I shied away from, but since we were starting to learn about uh, airway, TMD and airway kind of go hand in hand. And there are different ways we can implement crown uh, the uh, CBCT in, in, in a analyzing the data, um, creating a treatment plan, and then also educating the patient. Oral maxillofacial surgery, you never have to worry about taking a third molar out without maybe discussing the, the surety that you may involve the lingual nerve or the proximity of where the wisdom teeth are. So, um, and then also the lesion, I'll show, tell you about later, but my hygienist. Uh, and definitely uh, more income. Personal growth and satisfaction go hand in hand with all of that. Um, increased case acceptance. So with CBCT, whatever brand that you pick, um, pain or trauma, and you add those things up, um, you get a significant number. And looking on the left hand of the screen there, going from one to five implants per month, and you add all that up, the yearly revenue gets to be about 357,400. And some of the CBT, CBCTs start as low as $35,000. And what's great about the newer ones that they're selling these days, they're scalable. So as you get better and you add more procedures and you go from a smaller field of vision to a larger, so you could do more uh, analysis of TMJ and sinuses and um, the other things, um, you can do that and scale that up and purchase that from your vendor. And then as it's circled here, that's uh, a lot of amal uh, amalgams, I see MOD, a lot of uh, restorations, 11,026. Everybody knows probably what it is, but uh, cone beam uh, technology is, is medical imaging. It's a technique consisting of x-ray uh, tomography where the x-rays are divergent and forming a cone, and that's where the cone comes from. Um, things you should start thinking about is the what, and first thing are imaging questions. Are you adding machine or replacing machine? Uh, many of us have digital panorexes that are ready for an upgrade, or maybe they're not digital, maybe they're the old analog. Most of the machines that are sold today uh, do both 2D imaging, the 3D imaging, and they'll, they'll also do uh, the TMJ imaging alongside of it. So you have to make a decision. Do you need a panoramic? Do you want a CBCT or do you want both? I, my uh, vote is to get the CBCT that has both because it looks like a pano. It, it acts pretty much like a pano, but you get all the information that comes along with 3D volumes. It can do it all. Uh, cost involved, like I said, it starts anywhere from 35,000 and it can go about 130K, uh, depending on what kind of tech or procedures you perform. Consider the footprint, look around your office. You'd be surprised um, about how much size they are. The, the newer one from Action will actually mount to the wall. It's very small. Um, the ICAT Flex is what we use, and then we use the Sharona uh, Orthophos in another part of the practice that doesn't have much space at all. Definitely have your vendor come in and do a site visit because there are certain uh, areas of space that you need between uh, where the machine is doing the imaging and how far the operator and anyone walking by needs to be. Network cabling. Um, the uh, standard of cabling right now is category six uh, for gigabit networks, which is again, another category. So if you are upgrading Make sure you upgrade your network, have a fast network. And then also make sure that your practice management system can possibly integrate or bridge with that, um, with that CBCT software. And then also check for your training. You wanna make sure you have on-site training if they allow that, and then any training that you need, uh, video on demand, and then also talk to your vendor to make sure that you can get some on-site training too. 
Um, so what kind of dentistry do you do? You need to kind of sit down with yourself and see what you're doing now and see what you want to do in the future. Uh, my goal has always been to continue to learn yearly, set goals for myself um, and move forward that way. So if you're just a general dentist like myself, um, you can do a, a scan with the patient and do treatment planning with that. Even though you're not planning on doing the implants, you can work with your implant oral surgeon and do the planning together online with the Zoom meeting or um, some of the software tools that come with the, um, the CBCT. Implant therapy goes without saying. Uh, surgery, we do third molars in our practice. We do um, some biopsies and um, cyst removals. Endodontics, I do a ton of that. I combine that with the CBCT and also the CERC technology and, and getting pretty good and fast at it, we can do the root canal treatment and their crown all in the same visit in about 90 minutes or so. We have the new um, Prime Mill. I take a look at that uh, very fast and efficient. And then also the Prime Scans from Serona work nicely with the CBCT. And uh, not to mention orthodontics and then also dental sleep medicine. As far as orthodontics goes, it looks like soon we will have uh, the ability to, uh, I think, virtually print these aligners without having to actually print a model, which has been uh, pretty tedious if you're a do-it-yourselfer. But I think that technology is going to leak here in the next year or so, so keep, keep your eye out for that. Um, what's the difference between a regular CT and a CBCT? The CBCT uses cone and the CT scanner typically, well, not typically, but it'll use more of a fan-shaped um, beam that's transmitted in the form of a helix or sp a spiral. If you come to my next seminar in July, I'll have Dr. Mahalovich, who's a radiologist, join me during um, the webinar to answer any questions and jump in when I make any mistakes. Try not to do those. So where? Um, I'd start with your own practice. Um, that's where we started. And then um, also I've seen some doctors do mobile and provide not only CVCT for their own practices, but make it um, something where they could make it and monetize it and provide it for other doctors. Check with your state and local uh, regulations um, and I'll talk about that too. There are some regulations that I didn't know about until after I bought the CBCT in my state so don't be surprised. I'll, I'll let you know about that experience. I was hoping that my Henry Schein vendor would have told me but it wasn't that expensive but it's something that you have to incur yearly as far as having a CBCT in your office. Um, or you could um, incorporate the CBCT into an imaging facility that you could join with some other doctors and provide that and share it or share it within the same building. I know a lot of the oral surgeons in our area um, do that. So there'll be a little line for the machine, but um, you can all um, defray that cost of the, the equipment. So TMJ, TMD, and CBCT. So the, the complex factors, we've got trauma, emotional stress. I've never had TMJ in my life until the last couple months um, on my left side. So I've been having symptoms. So stress doesn't definitely is part of this. Orthopedic instability uh, from arthritic changes over time. Just remember too, if we change any of those occlusal surfaces on just one teeth, we can create a flare up in the TMJ and create some arthritic changes that start up. So, um, be weary of that. Uh, muscular hyperactive uh, patient, uh, inflammatory degenerative, degenerative diseases which comprise the equilibrium of the TMJ. So getting the imaging, uh, that would be a full volume um, when we're doing that. So when we have our typical new patient that comes in, we'll do a full volume so we can get a good look at everything that's going on for the patient and then also the 2D imaging which is important also. Um, let's move on. As far as uh, bony alterations that you can look at with the CBCT, disorders like erosions, osteophytes, pneumatization of the sinuses, 
uh, the articular eminence are difficult to be detected with conventional radiographs. I think the greatest thing that I like about CBCT is it allows me to be a better practitioner because I have answers for the patients. Before that, I would have to do a lot of guessing in my own mind what, what's wrong, what's happening, but uh, I would say your accuracy level goes up 70 to 80% having it. And we're not gonna be able to solve all the problems that are there, but you're certainly become a dental detective having that um, technology in your practice. Uh, here's a picture of a CBCT of the condyles uh, above a 13 year old and then you've got uh, a 69 year old and you can see um, the differences in there. They're not too many. Um, the 69 year old looks pretty good <laughs> compared with the 13 year old. Got some development still there to do, but you can do your comparisons. Um, and as this technology grows and patients stay in your practice, you can do a lot of comparison between a CBCT that you took 10 years ago, especially I think um, people with sports and sports injuries too, if you have a baseline CBCT in your practice and, and God forbid had an injury with the patient, you had, would have some comparison um, there. Um, this is some lateral slices of the TMJ with maximum opening. You can actually take that while their mouth's opening and look for condylar mobility, uh, hypomobile, normal mobility in the middle, and hyper on the right side. I try to include these because when I go to a lot of lectures myself, I want to kind of know what, what, what I'm looking at. We do want to, I do want to stress that uh, it's important for, if you can, a radiologist to read these uh, for you but I like to read them myself uh, and get better at that so I can give some immediate answers to the patient. And most radiologists, uh, the radiologists that we use, Dr. Mihalovic, it's $70 a read. So if you want that extra layer of feeling better about the technology, but you're worried about um, missing something, um, definitely don't be shy to use the radiologist. The radiologist will um, give a report to give to the patient, then we have it for their own record. So don't let that stop you. Another uh, picture of lateral slices, uh, no bony change on that upper left. Um, you've got the osteophyte or a bony spur on that uh, section on B. Uh, got some flattening in C, some sclerosis, uh, erosion, and then um, a pseudocyte on that N, which is, um, interesting also. So different, different views to see different conditions. Again, it's good screening process for you, especially if you're trying to decide um, why the patient's having pain. Um, now you have a little bit of a background there. But again, don't be shy to use a radiologist. Dale Miles is a dental radiologist, which I'll give you his information at the end of the webinar. That is uh, a great, great one, great reporting. Um, definitely would consider him. As far as implant therapy, the CBCT measures exactly one-to-one -one ratio with no superimposed structures or, uh, or magnification. Um, you can precisely measure in between implants to make sure you have the proper room by clicking and dragging the ruler from one tooth or one implant to the other. Uh, the ability to assess detailed bone quality and quantity. Um, the more and more implants that you place, uh, you'll just know just like the dentistry we do, what kind of bone you have within usually the first two, three millimeters. Um, and it will coincide typically with the CBCT, the densities measured in hound's tooth units. Um, the opportunity to eliminate contingency treatment plans and surprises during your implant surgery. When I used to do it freehand, um, that would happen a lot. I'd end up with very compact bone. Um, and take an extraordinary long period of time to do the surgery. Now ahead of time, my scheduling's better. Um, I'm not surprised by certain things and certain artifacts and um, in the area that we're gonna be working. Less surgical trauma. Um, I've gotten implants and most oral surgeons and people listening, if you are a specialist, you can get that down to 15 minutes or so to place a single implant if you're well prepared. An increase in patient education, 
Um, you can have them sign off on some of the pictures that you've showed them from their CVCT so they have a full understanding and you're covered medical legally. The quality of the 3D data in order to create the optimal surgical guide. Um, patients are asking for the guides. Um, you can print them in the office. Don't be shy to learn about that also. Um, implant selection, we typically use three or four different brands in our practice depending on a certain situation and all the CVCT software has the different brands built in so you can virtually try in different sizes and shapes and widths without actually having, obviously not having to go to the mouth and go to the mouth with confidence that they're going to work. With guided surgery, uh, the, the standard of care is getting more and more towards the surgical stint. Um, there's a new technology, I, I would check it out. It's called X-Guide, uh, Nobel Bio, BioCare owns them now. Um, and it's kind of a way to do the surgery without the surgical guide. So it's uh, guided, guideless. <laughs> so it's called uh, XNAV. They'll actually come to your office and do a demonstration for you. Um, and they've been around for four or five years, but if you want to do it, um, not the old fashioned way, it would be freehand, but with the surgical guide, you take your images with your digital impression scanner, um, take your 2D, and then you can plan the case with your software that comes with the CBCT and create a stint. Uh, the software keeps getting better and better, it updates on its own, so you can get your updates from new implant systems. There are new ceramic implants coming out from Nobel BioCare for patients that have allergies. Um, these libraries of implants are constantly updated for your, uh, for your knowledge and to actually virtually treatment plan your case and have it all set up before you even go to the mouth. Marking your nerve. Um, different types of stents where you have your tooth supported, your mucosal supported, obviously not the most stable, and then the bone supported that I've done several cases uh, where you're actually putting a fi fixation pin into those over there by the buckle on the picture. Um, but they are accurate if you get the surgical kit that goes with it. That's the expensive part. They're typically around $10,000. So you have to have a surgical kit that is guided separate from your regular kit because it has all the different um, drills and the different um, collars that keep you from going too, uh, too shallow or too long when you're putting the implants in. As far as the uh, oral maxillofacial surgery. Um, I've taken courses over the years and um, love oral surgery. And you can be a great oral surgeon um, and use your CBCT to be prepared, especially with third molars. Um, knowing where your nerve is, proximate, proximity of the mental nerve. Sometimes you can even see the mental nerve loop in there and be prepared for that. So. Um, it saved my, uh, my buns many times uh, planning these cases for all on four or even mini implant cases too, to make sure that you don't um, impede that nerve space. I don't do sinus lifts, but we do do bone grafts. Um, it gives you exactly um, the information you need when you're placing the implants and trying them in to knowing the length and the size and the density um, and also the screw type. Uh, we use a lot of the Nobel Active, but if I have a softer um, uh, bone, I want to use that. But if I want to switch to a different brand, I can do that quickly in the planning part of the software. So you can um, do that interchangeably. TMJ studies, again, getting a baseline reading. We do a full scan, full field of view for most of our new patients combined with their um, full mouth series and intraoral images. and uh, the, the video in digital impression scanning. So that first patient appointment I think is critical to get and gather as much information as possible. We typically allow about an hour and a half for the patients. If they're complicated, then we'll have them come back to go over their treatment. But now with uh, the NOW Society, I try to get at least their initial treatment plan figured out cost-wise while they're, they're in the chair. Um, one thing that makes you a better dentist is uh, knowing 
um, when there are root fractures that with a typical, on the left, you can see a typical PA that you can't, the patient's complaining of pain. I would be thinking maybe the implant or not the implant, the post is loose. Um, there's a fracture maybe somewhere, but if you look at over on the right, you've got a complete fracture that you would not um, ever see on a 2D picture. Um, finding impacted teeth um, is um, a great way is done with the CBCT. You can't do it without it. You know exactly where those impacted teeth are. Most general dentists, uh, I would say, would be able to do that uncovering uh, with a laser and know exactly measuring from the premolar, five or six millimeters over to the right and start digging. I had a patient that had a sialolith that was the size of mm, probably half a golf ball under his tongue. And um, I measured exactly from the lingual of tooth number 19 to where it was, used the laser, went straight down, uh, an MD YAG laser to get through and the uh, sialolith came right out from underneath it, like kind of like a volcano but it gives you uh, exact measurements of where things are to make you a better dentist and actually to do procedures you otherwise might send off to the specialist. Um, marking the nerve, uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, it, all the software comes with it. I'm waiting for the day that it will auto mark the nerve for you. So I'm excited that that might be coming soon. I think also in the future of CBCT, Smart mathematicians will create algorithms that will do your chart for you. And what I mean by that is it will know what the density of composite is, of gold, of implants, and actually draw that into your computer chart for the patient so that you don't have to uh, speak out MOD on number two, uh, gold crown on number three, that the software will do it for you. And um, I'm very confident that will happen soon. Third molar removal, uh, we make sure we get our consents done. We'll even print out a colored picture uh, similar to this after I might say, you might want to go to the oral surgeon uh, for this one. We usually try to send the hard ones to the specialist. Hopefully there are no oral surgeons out there. Um, but uh, have them initial that, take a picture with the iPad and stick it in their document center. We use um, iPads in almost all the rooms, it's been very beneficial getting signatures and, um, and then documentation for consent quorums. And um, it's been great. So I'm sure many of, uh, many of you have those, but they are indispensable. You have your uh, routine 2D pano um, that you see. And look real closely um, at the middle there. This is my hygienist. And I have another recommendation for my colleagues, and that is make sure that your staff aren't treating themselves to dentistry without your help. And what I mean by that is uh, I found out later on this case that the hygienists were cleaning their own teeth. They weren't getting uh, the doctor to look at their teeth and treat themselves like they would their patients. And this is, this is what was missed. This is my hygienist and she's got, I'm not going to say a cannonball, but that's what she had going on. Fortunately, it was benign, but um, she brought it to my attention two years after seeing this. And you can see down in that area of where it would be, it's not going to show up on a 2D panel. Look at that. That's crazy. And she, uh, I sent her to the oral surgeon. They uh, degranulated, didn't put any um, bone graft in there, and uh, we looked at an extra or a 3D scan just the other day. We had, we're training a new staff member, and it's actually filling in with bones. So um, I dodged the bullet with that one, but yeah, don't let your staff do dentistry without you knowing it. Make sure you're doing those exams for your hygienist. Um, endodontics. Uh, all the time, I use this. And then since we get to do that full volume on the new patients, when they come in and if they do need um, root canal treatment, I can already um, reference their 3D and be looking for extra canals and unusual anatomy. Um, 
in the patient. I have a little tooth here I extracted and it's got an extra root on it. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. I gotta put on my reading glasses here. But it's number 31 and it has a little extra, whoop, there we go, little extra root off the side there. But that you wouldn't see with 2D. Um, patient wanted the tooth extracted, so we did, so I keep it as an example. Um, so you can determine your exact location of potential MB canals prior to surgery. Um, Determine the risk and benefit and retreatment of tooth extractions. Clearly diagnose root fractures. Again, it makes you the expert. And even if you're not gonna do these procedures and you're the dental detective and the patients come in for their dental emergency and you've never seen them before and you figure out the why of why they're having so much pain, uh, whether you do the treatment or not and you're 100% confident because you have it, that makes me feel good at the end of the day and it makes the patient feel great that you're the authoritarian and the, uh, the expert in our field. So just makes you, uh, it makes a great dentist a greater dentist by having the technology. Uh, you can see the potential impacts of abscess on surrounding structures, especially the sinuses. Um, and I've convinced many patients that need root canal treatment that aren't getting the root canal treatment because they don't have any pain at all but you show them their sinuses and you show them the periapical mucositis that it's causing. And then they say, oh yeah, that's why I must be a bi, I've had these headaches for years. Um, so you can convince patients with the, the photos and the pictures um, may, uh, several times a day I'm using it. Um, the endodontic ROI, um, patients that aren't doing treatment versus after the comb cone beam scans, they are doing the treatment because they can see what you're trying to convey to them um, start, instead of waiting. And I always tell my patients, and you can use this and you probably do, I always tell them pain is always the last symptom that the body gives to the human when something goes wrong. Not the first. Uh, most patients think that pain is the first. It's like the alarm in your car. It goes off if there's a perpetrator. But um, they're shocked to know that pain is the last symptom. And then I usually tell them when it's the last symptom, there's not many options. So that's why screening and periodic exams are paramount importance. And then the other thing I tell them is if you could see things the way I see them, your mouths would be a lot healthier. And CBCT actually allows them to see what I see um, and they can understand it. So again, we want them to ask for treatment. We're going to be much more successful having them ask for treatment or what's next than me telling them to go up front and schedule for that treatment. They get buy-in, which is important. Ap apical surgery, um, you'd be surprised at how many chronic lesions that you discover that you would have never seen, like uh, Sam's uh, CBCT with the cyst. Um, extractions, um, you'll be doing a lot more of them. And then hopefully these patients move over to getting a dental implant to help them out. Locating MB2s, most of us know this. Uh, it's really exciting to know that again, when I'm going to the mouth that I can be prepared for it. Um, I'm always going to the mouth expecting to find more canals than um, what I start or what I expected or learned in dental school. Um, and then the CBCT just validates that information. Um, you can measure exactly, if I can't see that MB2, I can measure exactly from MB1 and see it and measure 2.1 millimeters and look right in the mouth and dig 2.1 millimeters. And especially in that figure five here, which is scary for me, it was scary, which was trying to go dig for calcified canal. And then it's very satisfying when you can go down and find that. It's like finding buried treasure. You're going to love it. You're gonna get that canal filled and you're gonna do a great service for your patient. Um, this patient, this came from Dale Miles. Uh, you can see the MB2s on a second molar. Again, whenever I do endodontics, always look for, always know that there are gonna be more canals and if, if there aren't, then you're in good shape. But look at the MB2s that are present when the blue arrows and then also in the orange circle, 
you're going to want to know that there are three canals on that premolar before you start, um, or you want to may want to refer that one out. So again, making proper choices, saving time, and it ends up um, building up your bottom line and making you feel good at the end of the day that you did the best for your patients. Lateral um, lesions, or they call those the lesions of endodontic origin or LEOs. This is, would be one there. You can look closely at that one arrow. Um, that's a lateral canal and it wasn't filled conventionally. Um, we can talk about son endo, which is a, a way to use sonic energy and vacuum and negative pressure to really clean out everything. We use that in our practice. But in this case, the lateral canal wasn't filled, so you got an endodontic lesion that from a, a typical PA and the patient's complaining of pain, you look at it and say, I'll have to send this to the specialist because I don't know what's causing the problem. It's probably a crack. That's what I always default to. It's, it's probably a crack. Let's, let's send them to the endodontist. But now I may still want to send them to the endodontist for the retreatment, but at least I can show why they're going because it's, it's right there in front of you. Um, on the left, endodontic diagnosis, that's a regular PA. And then a uh, patient's having pain or they, they may test, um, um, you know, you do your cold test and your percussion test and you're still not understanding why they're having pain. You take your CBCT and look over on the right you can see the lesions there, plain, plain as day. Uh, coronal view, uh, the mesial root of number 18. This is one that if you took a PA of, you may think, oh, I'm going to send this patient for a retreatment. But if you look over to the right, you can see there's a, a perforation through the bone, which this tooth needs to be extracted. Um, instead of wasting the patient's time to maybe send them to the endodontist, to evaluate that, um, that's, a, that's a tough one to heal. So not only are you going to save your, yourself time in the office, streamlining your workflow, but you're also going to make good decisions that are going to save your patient's time. Um, to retreat, again, to retreat or extract, um, if I just saw this PA, I would think, oh, I've got my gentle wave. I can retreat that. Um, and if I didn't take a closer look, at it, the tooth has a fracture, no history of trauma. Um, but the patient, you know, of course, you ask them if they bit down on something hard. Uh, they always tell you it's a potato chip. I'm not so sure. Um, but uh, that tooth, I would would want to extract. Um, Ten years ago, I'd probably try to retreat that, and then find out later that we wasted um, time and money on that. So CBCT allows you to see what you would normally not see. External resorption um, is uh, hard to see on PAs. If you look over again at the left and then look over at the right, you're seeing um, this resorption that otherwise you, would, you wouldn't see on typical x-ray. And if you combine, again, the, the 2D with the 3D, you're gonna be unstoppable. Internal resorption um, can be seen very easily on 3D from different um, points Sagittal, axial, coronal, um, it allows you to, again, see what you don't see and make a great diagnosis and whether you want to try to treat it or not, um, it gives you many options. PA versus the CBCT, again, you can see the uh, resorption, but the typical PA on that upper right, you just, it's hard to see or I chalk it up to artifact or, you know, but the patient's having pain um, and you do your testing, but adding that CBCT gives that surety factor of knowing what is causing the pain. It becomes very obvious with it. Um, endo retreat tooth number 14. This is with Gentle Wave. This was not done by me. Uh, I just got this on the message board from the Gentle Wave people. Tooth number 14. Look at that PA in that center area on the on the upper section, you can see internal resorption here that's present, but you wouldn't see it on the PA. I'd say, oh, that's a great endo. Why is the patient having pain? Again, being able to make the diagnosis, whether you choose to treat it or not, um, allows you that ability. So uh, this endodontist decided to treat. And then the post-op, if you go back, you can see that not only was there internal resorption too, there was an MB 
um, MB2 that wasn't treated. So that got treated in the aftermath. The palatal root got filled, the MB2 got uh, filled, and um, you can see in that lower left quadrant how that internal resorption got filled too. So I'll have to wait and see how that turns out, but I, my guess is it's gonna be great. Orthodontics, um, things you can count on if you do. In our practice, we typically do invisible, the Invisalign or Sure Smile. In our practice, uh, again, dead on accuracy, call before you dig technology, um, right at the tips of your fingers, precise measurements of unerupted teeth. Um, newer procedures, you can do canine uncoverings for the um, for your orthodontist, or you can bond them if you have just a little laser um, to do that. So procedures you otherwise wouldn't do. Direct measurements uh, relative to the positions of the teeth within the skeletal components, the ability um, to objectively assess your asymmetries. Um, and then that, that also goes with big time uh, treatment planning when you're doing cosmetic cases to point out those asymmetries, especially with denture patients too is to show the asymmetries in the bone um, ridges and show them why they may have uh, a can't and why we can't put the teeth where they wanna put them. So it gives you extra tools to let them know that you physically can't do what they're asking you to do, although you'd like to. Uh, Three-dimensional views of the airway. If you do sleep medicine, um, it is uh, a great teaching tool. It, it's not something that you can hang your hat on and say, while your airway is uh, 20 millimeters the size of a straw, um, you have sleep apnea. It's more to bring awareness to it. Um, obviously, sleep tests uh, have become easier. In our practice, we send them home uh, with them, and then it's read by a physician, and the diagnosis is made. But it's a great way to get the conversation started um, and looking at their sinuses and their deviated septum and there, there are so many things that you can refer these patients back to their primary care physician that we get referrals back from our primary care physician more than I've ever had in 31 years just because it becomes a two-way street as far as us referring them back for treatment too. Um, confident pre-assessment of the periodontal bone levels um, prior to orthodontics without any additional x-ray exposure and obviously incidental endodontic findings that you don't want to find out after teeth are moved, um, that's not good. Um, finding impacted canines, you, you know that it's impacted, it's not there, but where is it exact, exactly? This technology gives you to the, the millimeter exactly where it is, if it's retrievable, if it should be, as I tell my patients, a spare tire. Um, I tell them research in California has shown that there are stem cells in impacted teeth um, that otherwise in the future could um, prove to be used in other therapies, spinal therapy for accidents and so forth. So um, I'm not always so up to uh, take out those third molars all the time if they're not giving them any problems. Digital orthodontics. Um, for the orthodontist, the specialist, they know um, what this can do for their treatment planning, uh, cut down the visit times, plan their case ahead of time, anticipate the movement. The whole uh, movement with airway and growing an airway for a young child between the ages of eight and 12 with palatal expanders was discovered by an orthodontist with 3D x-ray by accident on his own son. I saw this lecture I think it was uh, a Kiva lecture about four or five years ago. They called it the 3D Symposium. So if they ever bring that back, I'd highly recommend it. But this orthodontist saw that his son's airway grew from 100 to 160 after six to eight months. So permanently growing this boy's airway um, is, 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 is it's exciting and it's something you can talk to your patients about that separates your practice from another practice. Even though you may not do the palatal expanders, um, it's a way to um, help prevent sleep apnea in young adults, well, young kids. Uh, sleep apnea, the airway space includes a nasal cavity, nasopharynx, velopharynx, oropharynx. Um, large field of view is necessary for that. Most of the anal analyzing software is already built in 
to the software when you buy it. Sometimes you have to pay for it as an add-on. Make sure that if you do sleep dentistry that you ask them about how many seats or how many licenses come with it. Serona unfortunately only sells three. I've been after them to, to allow me to buy more. You can free one up, but you've got to go to another room to free it up because we like to go over the 3D x-ray with all our patients at all times in all the treatment rooms. So um, that's kind of a hang up with that, but hopefully they'll correct that. But make sure um, if you really want to get the full brunt of CBCT and sleep medicine that you have that available in all your treatment rooms because you'd be surprised. Like I said, you're, you're doing a crown and bridge procedure and the tongue's in your way and the patient uh, constantly wants to sit up because you're waterboarding them <laughs> and then in your head you're blaming the patient but this poor patient has uh, genetic predisposition for sleep apnea or in fact has it but now you have a solution or at least um, some way to refer them to their primary care physician and then becoming the expert. One in four patients ages 30 to 70 have sleep apnea and they're sitting right in, in your chair. I would probably say I refer two to three patients a day to myself and these patients have been in my practice forever. It's a growing area. I recommend it for everyone who's listening. Um, there's some tricks of the trade with uh, medical insurance, but they've been better and better at reimbursing um, the treatment for the patient. So highly recommend that you get into that. Um, I've become a medical provider. I'm a, I'm a dentist and I don't have a medical degree, but you can become, believe it or not, a medical provider for the different insurance plans that are available if you choose to be. Um, and it just opens up uh, a better part of your practice uh, to have patients stop snoring and have better lifestyles. And you, it's better to get hugs for that. Um, it's real, real fun and profitable. Uh, airway analysis can be quickly done with uh, the software and my hygienists do it while they're waiting for me to come in the room and they'll get the converse, uh, conversation started, asking them about daytime tiredness. If you were sitting on the couch, uh, they call that, um, well, there's a, a test called the Epworth score that most doctors know about, but simple questions like, would you fall asleep if you were watching TV about three o'clock in the afternoon? Do you dream uh, nightly? I always tell them that you don't have to remember the dream vividly, but are you dreaming? That indicates that they're in stage four deep sleep, and that's the most reparative sleep that anyone can achieve. And they've said that, uh, they, the experts, that it can add 10 years to your life if you have good, great sleep every night. So it's an important um, area that dentists can provide for their patients. We see the patients more than their physicians. so definitely consider looking into this. It comes with the software. Again, you can colorize it. You can move the, the throat in 3D. Um, the light bulb goes off of a lot of these patients and say, they say that nothing's ever, no one's ever told them that. Um, I tell them a story about tori. Um, you can see with the CBCT what a tori looks like, these big bony protuberances and and they never knew what that was and they didn't know it was caused by clenching and they didn't know it was, um, they weren't born with it. So um, it gets things started in the right direction. So when I think that uh, the time is now, that was what my physics professor used to say, he'd always say the time is now, um, to get started with it, especially if, if you do have freer time because of the pandemic and shorter hours, I know, we have a lot of our hygienists that have come back, but several who still haven't come back. So uh, now may be a, a great time to invest in it. Um, I know they're doing the best financing and putting off payments uh, until you get up and running. And decide if you want to update your equipment. Do you have a panel? Do you want to just convert it to a CBCT is a great question. And a practice that I've been following that I heard from a consultant uh, probably 10 years out of practice was try to put aside 5% of your annual collection, excuse me, for technology upgrades, whether it be workstations or faster computers or networking or uh, different hardware devices like uh, three shape um, digital impression taking or CEREC, um, any of those. CBC choices. In July, I will be going over these more in depth, but there are a few here 
that um, I have my eye on, the Kivo from uh, Kivo uh, has the iCat and they also have a 3D. Again, finding out what kind of dentistry, getting your uh, Henry Schein imaging rip in and having those questions answered and asking them you know, about footprint um, is really important. Uh, the Plan Mecca Pro Max and Vizio uh, is pretty, pretty slick. Um, the Acteon is the one that I think has the smallest footprint if you have a very boutique office that doesn't have a lot of room. And then the Densply Serona, that's what we use, the Orthophos uh, SL that includes airway. And then the story about state regulations, and this is important, is you go from what they call a class B facility to a class A facility by bringing in CBCT. And what does that mean? It means an extra inspection, a yearly inspection, um, which in Missouri is about $1,200 that I think should have been discussed with me or just let me know. But I just want to let everybody give everybody a heads up that um, check with your state what, what that is, a C or the class B to class A, and what your requirements are to have that. But it's not that big of a deal. Um, there are your two units, your kind of your pano. You can put, um, they're vertic vertically upgradable. You can go for uh, bigger fields of view, add the Ceph attachment. We have the one there on the right, the ICAT Flex, which is the sit down model. Um, Cavo, the Op 3D, it's a fast scan, 2D uh, scanning. Most of them do have the panoramic scans. Most of the scans are, are very quick. Um, and then the radiation exposure is anywhere from 25 micro sieverts to 125, which for, again, it's kind of like when digital x-ray came out for the first time. Um, it's what you get out in the sunlight for a few days for an exposure that we usually do maybe once a year or once every couple of years, whenever it's necessary for the patients. The ICAT Flex series, that's the, um, brand that we have. We have the full field of view that uh, does endo, um, TMJ. Um, we can focus in just on a certain area of the mouth for the patient. Um, and the, like I said, the uh, prices have come down. Most of them have software that comes with it. Um, you can export these uh, DICOM files to other software. If you're more familiar, want to integrate it with your digital impression scanner. But I would try to stay, stay, my advice would be stay within the same family of uh, scanners so that things work together and the workflow is a lot easier for you. Um, the Pro Max is uh, another version, looks again, kind of flashy, looks like a Panorex, will fit in most uh, dental offices in a small space, great for endo implants, airway, and ortho. Again, make sure you tell your um, imaging rep the, the procedures that you want to perform, but it's great to have them all because then you can refer to the specialists and make them happy. Uh, the Vizio is pretty cool. It's uh, the newest one and it actually uh, allows you to select um, the field of view yourself. Uh, you can, it, it gives you the, the maximum size and the minimum size, but you can hone in exactly on uh, the size that you want with just the touch screen. So limiting the radiation to the patient, although it's minimal, is still a, still a good thing. Um, and it's an industry first patient custom image size for your fields of view. And then uh, we get a little a bit of patients that are um, claustrophobic and once they see that uh, chin strap, uh, it kind of scares them, so no chin strap. Plan Mecca, again, uh, is the Vizio G5, great for oral, uh, ortho, oral surgery and super GPs. This is the one we have in our office. This one has some cool lights, some LEDs on the back, so I get to change, change the colors every couple days. I'm kind of geeky, I like that stuff. Uh, variety of 3D volumes. The 3D, uh, the Orthophos SL has the largest field of view. Um, I like having that because I can um, do whatever procedure I want to do and then also refer out. It's got 
the Cydexa software that comes with it, occlusal bite, uh, keep the head steady, and 100 color choices for, that was the LEDs I was talking to you. I didn't know they had 100. And then here's, uh, as far as dense supply goes, their offerings, the lowest starts at 26, the highest is 109. It may be a little bit more with software support and licensing. This is the smaller one, Acteon X Mine, the one that uh, fits the wall. I kind of call it the boutique one. And um, it also comes with a great software that will allow you to do implant planning and diagnosis. And here's Dr. Miles. Um, I know we're running over, I'm, I'm done. Uh, so drconebeam.com uh, is great. And he's got a little software called Dental Rider that we use. So if you wanna do your own reporting and get good at it, uh, it allows you to pr provide a professional looking report for your patients. But again, don't be afraid to farm that out to an MD radiologist. And then these are the, the last things, a couple things I think the advantages of CVCT, you can take 3D, 2D, and CEPHs, small footprint in the office. You don't need to use that as an excuse not to get it. Makes a great dentist a greater dentist, airway. And many insurance companies now are, um, offer it as a benefit. I know MetLife, um, United Concordia, uh, a bunch of the other ones. And our average fee, I think, on that is $350. And then um, the patient pays the $70 for the radiologist. You can bump it up if you want to, um, but we, we charge them what the radiologist charges us and better diagnosis. There's my contact info. Um, if we bring Adam back in, we can maybe answer some questions. I wanna thank you for your time on a Wednesday in the middle of chaos, but hopefully, like I said, bluer skies are coming guys and gals. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Bush, for that very insightful presentation. We did go a little over on time today, so we will not do Q&A, but if you did ask a question or if you have questions that we were unable to answer, please email us at webinars at henryshine.com, and we will be sure to work with Dr. Bush to get answers to you. As Dr. Bush mentioned, he will be back with us at the end of July giving another CBCT webinar, specifically on choosing the right CBCT for your practice. So be on the lookout for registration info for that webinar in the next few weeks. On behalf of Henry Schein, thanks again, Dr. Bush, for your presentation, and thanks to all the attendees for joining. Have a great night, everyone.